We'll start with looking at some of the key measurements for optical transmitters, and we'll look back just for a moment at NRZ or non-return to zero transmitters and some of the measurements that were made to characterize those outputs. One of them being optical modulation amplitude, or OMA, that's the difference between the one power level and the zero level. Extinction ratio is the ratio of the one and zero level, so it takes into account the uh, DC offset. There's another measurement called transmitter dispersion penalty, or TDP, that we'll talk about. It's a BER-based measurement. And then the very traditional IMAS test, which puts up a standards-based, essentially a keep-out region for the transmitted waveform. On the PAM4 side of things, we've got very similar measurements. There's one called the outer OMA, which is the difference between the three level and the zero level. So if you're looking at that PAM4 signal on the top right hand there, uh, the bottom level is the zero, and then it goes to one, two, and three. So the outer OMA is looking at the bottom and top rail. The outer extinction ratio is the ratio of those two levels. And then there's a new measurement called transmitter and dispersion eye closure for PAM4. That's TDAC-Q, and the Q stands for quaternary. Notice that there is no longer a traditional NRZ mass test, and we'll explore why that is in just a moment. So here's just a, a reference for you uh, going and looking at the latest draft, which is 802.3BS draft 3.5 from uh, mid-October. And here you can see the summary of uh, outer OMA, outer ER, and TDAC-Q. So what is TDAC-Q? Well, it essentially tells you the performance of your transmitter, your device, relative to an ideal transmitter. And if we were to go back and look at the NRZ TDP measurement, this is literally a BER-based measurement where we compare the performance of your transmitter with that of an ideal or golden transmitter. That's a BERT. And what we did was we looked at how much extra power, how much additional power was required at the receiver in order to compensate your device for its non-ideal performance. And the difference between uh, essentially that additional attenuation or power uh, was the TDP value. Because it required quite a bit of test equipment uh, and it was a BER-based measurement, it was fairly expensive and quite time-consuming to perform that measurement. So standard committee members decided that they wanted a, a different approach and developed the TDEC-Q measurement, where we indirectly measure the symbol error ratio using an oscilloscope, and that means that it's a lot more cost-effective and it's uh, fairly easy and fast to make that measurement compared to the TDP measurement. So this is a block diagram showing the TDEC-Q measurement. On the top left, you can see your device, your optical transmitter, and it's got to generate an FSPRQ pattern. That's a short stress pattern, repetitive, quaternary, so it's a PAM4 signal that's 2 to the 16 minus 1 symbols long. And that's passed through some uh, a variable reflector to control the return loss. It's passed through a test fiber. You may need to filter that signal before it goes into the oscilloscope. In addition, you need to have a, a clock recovery for your optical signal. And this is because the coherence, if you were just to trigger the DCA or your oscilloscope using uh, a trigger from your pattern generator or from your depth, for example, you no longer have coherence between or correlation between the trigger signal and the data signal. So you really have to use clock recovery, uh, specified 4 meg loop bandwidth with first order, meaning no peaking in the response. And you also need to have a very well-controlled reference receiver with specified bandwidth, depending on the baud rate that you're operating at. And then there's also an equalizer. All of these links are performing on the order of 10 to the minus 4, so they're fairly closed eyes and they need to be opened up in order to be analyzed. So the TDEC-Q equalizer is a 5-tap T-spaced FFE. We then make a pair of uh, histogram measurements on that PAM4 signal and post-process the signal in order to get the TDEC-Q result. So let's have a closer look at what's happening as part of that TDEC-Q measurement. Again, we're leveraging the fact that the link itself, the signal is operating with a very high symbol error ratio on the order of 2 times 10 to the minus 4. 
And so the first step that we do is we statistically determine the SER on your signal or on your duct using an oscilloscope. Rather than attenuate the signal to force errors like we did with TDP, we're now mathematically adding noise to create errors. And we continue to add noise onto the incoming signal until the target SER is observed. So that's on your debt, dot. The next step, and again, this is all done in post-processing, is to repeat that process for a virtual ideal transmitter. So you don't physically have to have this. It's all done uh, mathematically. But we continue to add noise to that signal with the same OMA as your gut until we achieve the SER. And then the amount of noise that gets added to the ideal reference receiver in order to reach that target SER is going to be larger than the amount of noise in your gut. And the difference in those noise levels represents TDEC-Q. So it becomes a fairly fast and easy measurement to perform. One thing to note that that TDEC-Q measurement has evolved since the start of 802.3BS. Very early TDEC versions optimized that TDEC-Q equalizer by trying to minimize the spread on the eye level, so minimize the ISI, and you want a, a maximum eye opening. In the latest draft 3.5, and again, as Steve said, it's, uh, all the technical changes for BS have really been implemented at this point. So what needs to get optimized is the TDEC-Q number itself, and there's various uh, ways that we're going to do that, and we'll, we'll look at those in more depth in a moment. Another change was the BS measurement, or BS standard initially defined a 5-tap T over 2-spaced FFE, and now it's a T-spaced FFE. The standard initially proposed a, uh, a more traditional Bethel-Thompson bandwidth, which is 75% of the baud rate, and now that's been changed to 50% of the baud rate. In addition, the initial uh, TDEQ definition had two time slices in the center of the eye. Now those two time, those histograms can be moved. They have the same relationship to one another, but you're allowed to move them slightly within that PAM4 signal. And so this is what's in the latest draft. There's still some discussions for CD about some additional changes that, if implemented, might be rolled back into the BS standard. But note that these changes were made to better represent what a typical system is going to uh, uh, behave like. And so we're really trying to emulate what the real receiver is going to be doing when making this TDEQ measurement.